This video provides an overview of the 24-hour diet recall. By the time you finish watching it, you should understand the purpose of this assessment tool, know the advantages and disadvantages of it, and be able to use a five-step multiple pass method to complete one. The 24-hour diet recall is a nutrition assessment tool that aims to capture a person's food and beverage intake. It's typically used as a way for a dietitian to get an idea of what a patient eats, which can be used to estimate daily intake of specific nutrients like energy, protein, and water, identify nutrient deficiencies, excesses, or imbalances, and understand where food is purchased and where and when it's consumed. Simply put, the patient provides a verbal account of everything they eat and drink from the time they wake up until the time they go to bed. Sometimes the dietitian asks for their food and beverage intake from the 24 hours leading up to the encounter. Other times, the dietitian just asks for a normal day to attempt to capture their usual habits. Advantages of the 24-hour diet recall include cost and convenience. Patients can be assessed for free. It also doesn't require the use of technology, can be completed at the bedside in the acute care and long-term care settings, and the results are instantaneous with the entire process generally taking 30 minutes or less to complete. A major disadvantage of the 24-hour diet recall is the potential for imprecise measurement through the exclusion of items and the misjudgment of portion sizes. This can be attributed to the patient being unable to accurately describe their usual intake, the dietitian failing to ask the appropriate probing questions, or a lack of access to tools that improve the accuracy of measurements like food models and measuring cups and spoons. The recall also only asks for 24 hours, so it doesn't have the ability to capture day-to-day -day variation in intake. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you check out the companion piece, which you can download for free. The link for it is down in the video description. The best way to obtain a 24-hour diet recall is to apply a multiple pass method. Rather than walking the patient through their day one time, a multiple pass method requires them to revisit what they eat and drink at least three times. Doing this allows the patient to remember any details they omitted on the first pass and gives the dietitian a chance to clarify statements they found to be vague or confusing. I like to think of this concept as a layering of information. On the first pass, the dietitian just gets a small amount of it. Then with each subsequent pass, they go back for more until the entire picture emerges. The gold standard for the multiple pass method is the automated multiple pass method. This is what the United States Department of Agriculture uses to collect data for the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. It's a five-step multiple pass method that uses a computer-assisted interview software. The interviewer is guided by a standardized set of questions, and the answers provided by the respondent are plugged into a program on a computer or tablet. That program has the ability to take the answers inserted and push the interview forward in a way that optimizes the quantity and quality of the details obtained. Although most dietitians don't have access to this technology, the five steps included in the process can be applied to produce a 24-hour recall that's still comprehensive. The five steps of the automated multiple pass method include the quick list, forgotten foods, time and eating occasion, the detail cycle, and the final probe. Each step represents a single pass. Thus, the interviewer starts with an initial gathering of foods and beverages consumed, and then goes back four more times for additional information. In the first step, the patient is asked to provide a basic account of their usual diet in a 24-hour period. This part should be as unstructured as possible. You can provide some guidance, like what happens next if they go in chronological order. However, you don't want to bombard them with probing questions about the timing of meals, portion sizes, preparation methods, brand names, or items they may have forgotten. All of that happens later on, so try your best to remain calm. Once you have the quick list prepared, it's time to move on to the forgotten foods. Here, the goal is to probe for foods and beverages that the patient may have omitted on the first pass. 
you go back to the beginning of their day and ask questions about the meals and snacks they've already described. For example, if in the quick list a patient said, in the morning, I have two eggs on a roll with bacon and a banana, then you'll want to ask questions like, is there any cheese on the egg sandwich? And do you have anything to drink with it? The six categories of foods asked for in the automated multiple pass method include beverages like coffee, tea, milk, juice, and soda, alcohol in the form of beer, cocktails, and wine, sweets like candy, cookies, and ice cream, snacks like crackers, popcorn, and chips, fruits, vegetables, and cheese, and bread, rolls, and tortillas. One that all add is condiments like ketchup, mayonnaise, and salad dressing. These are all items that the patients tend to forget. Nevertheless, they can have a massive effect on the overall diet pattern and should be accounted for prior to moving on. By the time you advance to the third step, most of the foods and beverages for the 24-hour period should be known. So, the next thing you'll want to do is attach a time and title to each eating occasion. Continuing the example from the previous section, in the third step you ask questions like, What time do you eat the egg sandwich? And, do you consider that your breakfast? One goal of doing this is to learn more about how the patient's day is structured. Another goal is to get the patient thinking about their recall in a slightly different way, which may help them to remember more information. For instance, they may say, it's more of a mid-morning snack. I usually have two donuts with my coffee about two hours before it. This is the kind of information you may not uncover with just one pass. Beyond getting the time of the eating sessions, I think knowing when the patient falls asleep and when they wake up is important too. After all, it could reveal an undesirable habit like eating immediately before laying in bed. At this stage, you should have a pretty general idea of what and when the patient eats and drinks, but are still missing details about where it comes from, how much is consumed, and how it's prepared. The detail cycle is where you gather all of that information. Once again, you go back to the beginning of the day and get portion sizes, preparation methods, brand names, and where the food comes from. If you have food models or images to assist with estimating portion sizes, then you should use them. If you don't, then you just want to do the best that you can. I like to use simple guides like your fist is a cup of cereal, rice, or pasta, a deck of cards is three ounces of chicken, fish, or beef, and your thumb is two tablespoons of oil, peanut butter, or mayonnaise. This way, I can approximate intake even when the patient is unable to visualize their meals using standard units for measurements. One more thing you can do here is a final review of the recall and ask probing questions about any gaps you've identified. Like if you notice there's a window from 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. where the patient doesn't eat or drink anything, then this would be the appropriate time to point it out. After you get all the details for portion sizes, preparation methods, brand names, and where the food came from, you're ready for the final probe. In this step, the patient is asked if there's anything else they'd like to add to the diet recall. That's it. When the patient has nothing more to add, the process is finished. Now you should be able to use everything you gather to make estimates of intake, identify major issues, form a nutrition diagnosis, and plan an intervention. In summary, with the multiple pass method, the dietitian doesn't just go from beginning to end one time to get all of the details. Instead, they gather information in layers, adding a little bit more information with each pass. For the five-step multiple pass method, you start by getting a basic account of the patient's usual diet in a 24-hour period. After that, you probe for foods and beverages that the patient may have omitted on the first pass. Then you learn more about how the patient's day is structured by attaching a time and title to each feeding session, get portion sizes, preparation methods, brand names, and where the food comes from, and review the recall once more to close any existing gaps. Finally, you ask the patient if there's anything else they'd like to add. When there's nothing left to add, the diet recall is complete and it can be used to make estimates of intake, 
identify major issues, make a diagnosis, and intervene. When considering this concept, keep in mind that what's been outlined in this video is an ideal process. This doesn't mean that it's always realistic or that it's necessary to use in every assessment. It simply offers a level of thoroughness that you can strive to attain. You should also be aware that you don't need to let the patient know about the method you're using. In other words, you never have to explain the multiple passes or the names of each step. Your goal should be to flow from step to step without the patient even realizing it. Last but not least, if you're recording the diet recall by hand, make sure you leave plenty of room on your paper. If you cram the first pass into a small space, you'll never be able to fit the information obtained later on. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to download the free companion piece by following the link in the video description.